Hi, I'm Jules from Design Your Own Pocket and in today's Canva tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this really sweet Valentine's animation. There is quite a few steps to this animation but don't worry I'm going to break it all down for you and take you through everything little by little. And if we go to our layers you can see that there are quite a few layers in this um, animation and even just in the illustration part so what I'm going to do is break down how we build that lovely 3d cloud textured background so that it looks um, like the typewriter is floating in the sky and what I'm going to do is just start with a blank page first of all I'm in the mobile template size 1080 by 1920 go to the elements section and I'm just going to type in realistic clouds and you can see here it brings up lots of lovely options for the clouds. Now we need to add in some gradients to the top and bottom of the page and that is really just to give some depth to the background and we do that simply by drawing a box, grabbing that element and stretching it across the page and then we're going to go to our gradients at the bottom of the page and don't worry about the colour just yet because we can alter that we're going to click the plus button and we want to change the direction of the gradient first of all we're going to choose the blue one and we're going to take this transparency right down to zero because we only want to have one colour blending into the colour of the black background and then we, if we choose more of a blue we can also change the hue and the saturation here and I'm going to darken that down quite a bit. Now if I copy and paste it and I can turn it around this time make it a much deeper gradient so then we'll just move that to the back layer. So let me build up a couple of the clouds We have the clouds now and with the gradients in the background it's really starting to build up that 3D effect that we want to have for the background. I'm wanting to find a typewriter that is looking head on but one that I can also get the effect of the paper rising as it's been typed on so we need to get the angle right. Once we've got the typewriter in place I want to add a little shadow underneath the typewriter so it doesn't look like it's floating. So I've got a little black shadow that I'm just going to sit almost hidden underneath the paper I'm just going to go to my elements and I'm going to choose the paper with the rounded edges I'm going to change the colour to a parchment colour and then I'm going to give it a very very slight corner rounding We want to hide it behind the typewriter but have enough room and enough height that we can bring up the text and have it sitting just underneath so that it's sitting just ever so slightly visible before we start our first animation. So I'm going to do this in stages before we bring in the floating love heart hot air balloons I'm going to add the transitions with the typewriter effect let's reduce this down to about one second I'm going to duplicate the page and I'm going to go to my positions and select paper layer and I'm going to move it up slightly. I'm going to type the first of the wording that we want to place on the page and what I want to do is find a typewriter font. I'm going to find one called Special Elite. So that's I've got the first one and we're going to need to add an animation to this which will be the typewriter animation and we just want it to happen on enter and we'll reduce the speed down a little bit so it comes in a little slower. We want to copy that page and duplicate it and we want to grab both elements and move them a little more. We can copy the text your day is. Move that out a little bit so it fits all in one line. We can move that up so it sits quite close. And then we're going to repeat those steps again. We are going to duplicate the page grab both text and page and increase a little more 
So once we have the three lines of text, what we want to do is add the transitions between each slide and we are going to use match and move. The wording is coming in before the page is fully moved, so we have to change the timing of I hope. Select the text in the three dots and bring up show timing. We have to bring it in so that it is going to start appearing once the page is fully moved. So now when we hover across, you can see that the paper rises and then I hope starts to come in. So that's has got our text in place. And there's one more transition to add and the page fully up so that we can add in a couple of X's. And we just want to animate just the X's. Again on enter and reduce the speed down slightly. Now we go back to the first slide so we can add in the lovely little falling heart shaped hot air balloons. Search red heart hot air balloon. Selected a couple that I thought were really nice to go with this animation. So I'm going to start off the first slide with just two of the balloons in place and I'll just make this one a little smaller. Then I'm going to copy the red one, make it quite a bit smaller and have it just so it's peeking in from the top edge of the design. One we're going to use the create an animation and I'm going to have it drop down and to sit just above the typewriter. So I'm going to hold down shift so that it keeps a straight line like so. And I'm also going to make it steady so that it falls at the same speed for the whole duration. And I'm just going to click done when I'm happy with that. So now we've got a little animation happening on the first page. What to do is so that the balloons will disappear is we're going to click on the red heart and the white. Select command copy and click on the next slide and press command V and do that on each slide and this is so they are in the exact same position on every slide. No animation on these balloons at all so now when we slide across you'll see that they are there the whole duration but we also have to now copy in the balloon that is moving in the first one and make sure it doesn't disappear off the rest of the designs and we do that by selecting it and hovering across to see where the last point is and we need to draw a line and that will guide us of where to place it on the next one. So if we move it down and we need to remove the animation because we've copied it. So if we delete the path there's no longer an animation on the second slide and if you do a wee bit of hovering you can see it's now in the same position. Just going to move that up a little bit. That's better. So now we've got the position okay on the second slide. Again we're going to press command C, go to our next slide, command V, next slide, command V, command V, command V, so that we have them all in place through the whole duration. And then I have one more hot air balloon to add to this design. But this is the white balloon. If I copy the white balloon and I'm going to go to the third slide because this is the slide I want the animation to appear in. Command V. I'm going to increase the size with a different size than other balloons and again but like we did before I'm going to have it appearing on the top of the page. I'm going to zoom out so that you can see this in full. And we're going to click animate and create an animation and do the same thing as before. We're going to hold down shift and drag so it comes in, in a perfectly straight line. We need to click steady so that it falls at a steady pace. And we'll click done. Then if you take your arrow and slide to the very end of that page, we can see where it stops. So that we can try and draw a guide for us to copy it in place. On the next page, copy, go to the next slide, paste it in place, but we need to remove the animation, delete the path. So now you can see I've got the guides 
and I'm going to make sure that that matches up to the last place it stopped and it did so now I can copy and paste the last balloons in place so you can see there's it's a wee bit more lining things up and making sure the animation um, works correctly and a few more stages to it but now if I just hover quickly over we can see we've got the moving balloons now as well as the paper rising and the typewriter text appearing on the page so you can see all that all in motion but we still have this slide here where we have the burst of blooms coming out for the last slide and I'm going to show you how to recreate that in our next stage. For the floral effect popping out from behind the typewriter I like to actually design this on a separate page and then once I've got all the elements gathered bring it across back into the previous slide because it's much easier to work that way. This search I am going to type in water colour flower illustration and this is just so we can gather flowers that are all using the same look and feel as each other and I just want to select a variety of different colours that will show up really nicely against the background and behind the typewriter and once I've got a few flowers I'm then going to type in watercolour leaf and this is just so we can get some foliage to put in amongst all the flowers as well and then last but not least I added in some little love hearts again with that watercolour effect just so that all of the elements all kind of blend in with each other. Now that we have all of the floral elements I've copied across the typewriter and I'm just making sure that the typewriter is placed at the top of the layers so that when we are moving the flowers they're going to sit behind and what we need to do is kind of create the finished effect on this slide. I'm just going to start moving floral pieces into place and this is really just up to you. Start going with what feels right for you. You can always tweak things, move things about, change the angles. So let me just do this part and I'll speed this part up for you. Now that I've got all the elements the way I want them, now I need to copy them into the last slide. So we're going to come back into this one, it has all the other elements in it and we'll duplicate. And then I'm going to grab everything, I'll just press copy and I'm going to delete all these elements here because we don't need these ones and just command V to paste in place. And you can see that it's copied over the air balloons so we need to go in to position and we're just going to move these so they are sitting back on top again. Duplicate the page and go back to our second last slide and this time we are going to hide everything behind the typewriter and the paper and we can just make sure we're tucking everything in behind like so. So that one is sticking out what we can do as long as we grab the corners we can reduce the size of it so any elements that are quite big will reduce first before disappearing. So we have to make sure we get absolutely everything and anything you can't select what we can do is we can go to our position and we can find the element to so this one here and once we've selected it then we can move it in place for things that are not so easy to grab if there's something else sitting on top of it and then we want to add our transition our match and move and you can see that if you hover over slowly that everything is now popping out and I just want to give that maximum duration just so we can really get the full effect of the flowers popping out. Now we don't need this last slide so we can now delete that 
So now we move playlist from the beginning. We have our hot air balloon coming in, we have our moving letter and typewriter text coming in, and then finally we have the full bloom. But you'll notice I also, at the start, have some added sounds. We have music and we have the typewriter sound effect as well. And I'm going to show you how we can add that in at the end too. If we click on here, you can see I have added some audio in here and we find them in the audio tab. And the first thing I did was I searched in typewriter sounds and it brings up a whole heap of different variations. If I choose one, I thought would fit in with the speed of the transition. So as you can see, when you listen to this sound, that it lasts as long as the transition does. I have actually clipped it because it went on for longer, but I didn't want the obviously the sound of the typewriter coming in after you've stopped typing. So all you need to do to add the typewriter sound effect is to grab it, hold down your button and just drag it across. And you can see here that this one has dragged in across the animation. So if I start to play it, you can see it's coming in too early. So we need to trim it so that it only starts to play when the first letter appears and then we want to stop it once it stops here and then we add a shorter second one which is this one here for just the last kisses and again I want it to only start when the first kiss appears and then stop when the second kiss appears so if I play it now, you can see that it's now playing only when the typewriter animation is happening on the page. I've also added this background music and again there are lots and lots of sounds you can add. One is just being a nice acoustic and again we can drag this down place it across and then we'll just have it coming in from the start of the animation and we can clip it at the end as well. So now when we play it you can hear both the typewriter effect and the background music. So if you enjoyed that animation I do have lots of other animation tutorials on my channel if you want to watch them now and you can also join my animation academy where I have in-depth Canva tutorials where I am taking you through step by step and the behind the scenes content creation and how I come up with my designs as a professional designer and my whole design process and look out for a new tutorial coming onto my YouTube channel very soon so make sure you are subscribing. If you found this video useful then do make sure to like, comment and I would love you to subscribe. I am growing my channel and please keep watching for the next video if you would love to see more Canva tips and tricks because I am your designer in your pocket helping you create kick-ass graphics even if you're not a pro.